up and we're live. we're live hello everyone welcome back to monday night monster jam casey love and sam catarasano hello everybody hello so i think we've got two mics going now right yep we're, with my own mic we're leveling it up a little <laughs> bit for you guys we're leveling it up playing the game right youtubing it right so welcome back. Hopefully you had an awesome weekend. Uh, hopefully you guys had a great Father's Day. Uh, I did. My wife made it super chill, super relaxing, amazing as always. I had a great time with the kids. Did some skating yesterday. It was a lot of fun. My son. Um, yeah, and just uh, took a snoozer, chilled, you know. It was good, man. That's the way it needed to be. Um, anyway, we're back. It's the week, start of the work week. It's hotter than hell. It's like 80-something, over 87, almost 90 degrees today. And uh, I love summertime. I love summer nights. But I hate when it's too, too hot, you know, because um, you're miserable. But, and you're all sweaty. But uh, it is what it is. We're in Southern Cal, and that's how it goes. So, uh, you know, because you turn to this zombie dust. <laughs> Thank you, Turkey Merc. I'm showing your cup again, man. Thing's so awesome. Sits right here all the time. Um, so yes, let's see. Tonight's show, we are going to jam on some more of this mutant, necro mutant. We're gonna get back into some uh, kind of armor effects and stuff like that. I'm gonna show you a different weathering and uh, well, similar weathering, but some you know similar weatherings, but on a a different colored surface, a different material surface, uh, metallic. So there we go. That's tonight's little demo for you. Um, at 7 o'clock, we will do a artist profile again, you know, like an artist share, and then we will do questions, Q&A as always. Same format, same everything. Sam, how was your weekend, man? What happened? Uh, mine was good. I ended up watching a bunch of movies. I watched um, the first episode of True Detective. Um, watched Red Dragon for the first time. I've seen Silence of the Lambs a bunch, but I've never seen Red Dragon. Never seen Red through. Dragon. Yeah. yeah, I yeah. love Ralph Fiennes in that movie. Yeah, Holy yeah. shit! Yeah, he's badass. Um, watched Bronson with uh, Tom Hardy. I don't know if you've ever seen that one. Mm -mm. Good movie. That's mm. uh, Neil something or other is his name. Uh, is he playing seen. Charles Bronson? Yeah, he's playing Charles. Oh, Bronson. Oh, nice. So, yep. I'll have to check that out. Uh, watch that. Uh, Went and spent Father's Day uh, actually with my roommate's family because uh, she said that they had a bunch of leftover food. So like, hey, come devour all this. And I'm like, okay, free <laughs> okay, food. Let's do no this. problem. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, my room, my weekend was really great. It's cool. Really hot, but thank yeah. God, my house is very cool. So. Nice, nice. Yeah, it, it was it was warm. Let's uh, since you're looking at that screen, Sam, why don't you tell us who's in the chat joining us now? Let's let's acknowledge some of these awesome folks that help us out every week. For sure. Yeah, so so far in the chat, we've got Kevin Young. we got Jason Giaconetti, I believe that's how you pronounce that. Uh, Magneto Creations, who's been with us, I think, every night. Every wow, stream. thank you. Magneto Creations has been here. Thank you to guys that keep yeah. coming back, man. Chris Dawson, also joining us. David Felchek. Neil Leffler. Neo Kazama, who was also here last week as well. I remember Neil, Neo uh, asked us a couple good, good questions. Nice. Davey yeah. Cunningham joining us. John Eubank. All right. John's and, always here. That's nice. Thank you, John. Thank you, guys. They're always coming back. Yep, yep. Collier Wilms. And if you guys... Uh, oh, Matt, Matt McNeil joining us also. Sorry. Also, so, Matt. Uh, Kirk Durfee. Kirk Durfee, yeah. Yep. What's up, Kirk? Yep. Rad. So we got some got some cool... A lot, a lot of, of guys that come right back and again and again. We appreciate that. That means a lot to us. It's what really helps us keep going. Last stream did really well, guys. Thank you so much for all you guys that watched. Excellent. Um, all you guys that uh, were checking out the stream, uh, catching it live and after, uh, it's been great to see that was our number one uh, show so far. So we're going to try and keep that rolling this week, all right? Uh, thank you so much for that. Um, yeah, John Eubank is pointing out, not pointing out right now. Uh, we're at 937 subs. Very close to 1,000. Yes, <laughs> we are getting close, which that's a good point to bring up these. That means I got to get to work, man. <laughs> Because uh, we got some giveaways coming up, that means, that, that's putting the pressure on me. Because <laughs> we've got these 
sets. We're going to do 10 sets of these giveaway painted, fully painted up uh, sets that I have to get going on very soon for you guys. And that'll be coming up shortly because we're at 937 subs. So that means in a week or so, I bet we're going to be at the thousand mark. So that's great. Um, don't bite me, you huh. bastard. Uh, anyway, cool. So as you guys know, we've been talking about this the whole time. We want to give back to you guys. So 10 of you lucky subscribers will win these sets. You have to be a subscriber, though. You definitely need to subscribe and like, and, uh, and we'll, we'll host some sort of uh, giveaway where we can randomly pick the 10 lucky winners. And this is the first of several giveaways that we will set up down the road. But this is the first one. So you can adorn your refrigerator, whatever you want with these awesome things. Okay. So thank you guys for all the subs. We'll keep it rocking. Um, so tonight we are jamming again on the Necromutant. And uh, I think I'll get right into it so I'm not just chit-chatting my head off here. So I'm just going to take some quick black. This is just straight. I think we're going to try to avoid airbrushing this. I think we can do it all with brushwork. Sometimes it's fun to just challenge yourself, get away from the airbrush, and try to make it all happen with just a brush. I have nothing wrong with a brush and some paint. You know? Um, you can do a lot with that. So, let me just sort of go in here i'm just base coating this black um and really just gonna hit some areas that maybe got scuffed up or whatever or need it so we're gonna do some armor stuff tonight which will be fun you know little little techniques on some armor show you guys some of that uh, maybe a little weathering and what have you. I've done this armor many, many different ways. Actually, I've already painted these silver, but there's some other paint on them, so they'll have to be kind of redone a little bit. But yeah, I'm like sitting here chatting to everybody. I'm like, he's painting. So yeah, I'm just gonna I'm just base coating with black right now. You're not missing anything. There is this rubber seal piece. So the idea with this, as I was talking about last week, was that this is like a necro mutant soldier, like a foot soldier to some alien army race or something. Maybe they take humans and change them, modify them into these mutated necro monsters that kill for them or whatever you know we'll put soldiers but they have these space suits this is like astronaut suit thing and uh that they wear i gotta redo his skin too I, i'm not happy with the skin at all so skin will get more pale and creepy you know so maybe we'll just do a series of demos for you guys on this Anyway, so yeah, I'm just blacking out very carefully some of this armor here. And I'm going to try not to get it on the skin. Even though I don't like the skin, I'm, you know, going to try to be clean with the paint. There's all kinds of weird things on this. There's like this speaker thing that's hooked up because I envision that these guys can't really talk anymore. So they just make really creepy sounds and it's amplified through this little speaker on their chest to scare off, mainly to scare off, um, you know, other... I don't know, humans or army or people or whatever. Whatever these things are fighting, you know. Uh, make some weird sounds, you know. I don't know. Just me thinking backstory type stuff when I designed this, this thing. I actually designed this for a class way back when that I did. Um, 
where was it? Jersey, a Jer uh, show called Jersey Fest. I, I designed this bust for the class, and I taught a class on painting, and it was a lot of fun. I had a blast. We had like 25, 30 students or something crazy like that. I forget. It was a pretty enormous class. It was a lot of fun. And I did a sculpting demo out there, which was fun. Met some guys I wanted to meet and sculpt with for many years, such as Randy Bowen. Man, that was a blast. So I had a great time. <clears throat> Hopefully, a lot of you guys went to the Monster Palooza show recently. I was there. That was a blast. Um, it's funny how, like, those shows, man, you'll... I, I saw some people that were there and didn't even know they were there. And I didn't run into them. You know, you'd think you'd run into everybody, but, man, there's so many people at these shows. You just don't see them. But anyway. If you went, I'm sure you had a good time. I definitely had a great time. It was fun to reconnect with old friends. So I'm just base coating this. This is nothing special. It's just black. Just to get, you know... And this is not the, the color I'm going to work off of or anything. I'm going to go over this with another color, but I just wanted to black it back out. It was a little dusty, too. It's been sitting around. This piece has been sitting around for a while. <clears throat> Sometimes that happens. Sometimes monsters just have to sit around and wait their turn. So yeah, he's got these hoses, he's got this little speaker, all these little nodules and stuff. I gotta shoot, I missed this little thing. I don't know what this is, a little chest thing. Maybe this like lets the liquid out of his body that animates him. I don't know, I'm just making stuff up. It's fun to do that. It's like a plug. <laughs> you pull the plug and just all this goo comes out and he just dies. <laughs> Those green liquid. Dead mutant. That's the little secret that the good guys need to know about. To kill them easily. Pop them in the plug. Pop them in the pop them in the plug. <laughs> That's a good one. Pop them in the plug. So yeah, I mean, uh, <clears throat> fun, fun. Here we go. I'm going to let this uh, paint dry a minute. Um, I'm not real happy with his skin. I want to change the skin to something more um, like a lighter, fleshy, uh, pale tone. And I, and I really want to make the eyes white and veiny and... and I've done these green, yellow eyes so many times before. I'm just so sick of it, you know. It's it, I, I'm tired of seeing it. Well, <laughs> there's some bug eyes over here with that same color. So, yeah, trying to um, change it up, you know. I've painted so many of these. Uh, I, I don't know how many of these busts I painted. I mean, it must be or five, six of them or something that, that, you know, all differently. But I want to really make this guy uh, a little different than before. And a lot of times I've done this armor in like a uh, the space suit in kind of a cosmic color, like a purple or blue and aged it all, which is fun. That's a fun thing to do as well. Um, and I was going to do that tonight, but now I'm thinking, eh, I think something else, you know more standard it would be fun also another option would be to do it just like the jaw you know the metal jaw make the spacesuit the same but i already showed you guys that so i don't want to bore you with a second demo of the same crap that wouldn't be any fun so what we're gonna do 
what do we have here? We have some metallics. Got some lead. Belcher. That sounds that sounds good. Sounds like uh <clears throat> the noise that would come out of their speaker. Lead belchers. Maybe that's the name that should be the name of these guys. Lead belchers. Lead belchers. Yeah. But um so I've got some different colors here. So I'm just gonna go with what I've got. The only thing is I gotta be a little careful and uh well I can always paint over if I make a mistake, but I'm trying not to get this there's a rubber hose piece right here that I don't want to make metallic because it should look like a rubber hose. So it should be matte black. I think when I sculpted this, these all these little like nodules and parts, I, as I recall, I had like a tank or aircraft or airplane army model kit or something. I just kit bashed a bunch of parts into the clay. Worked out really good. Made it look all cosmic and spacey. So yeah, I'm just gonna go ahead and hit this with uh, this metallic now, this lead belcher. Now this is a color <clears throat> from Citadel paints. As you know, I like a lot of those paints. They work really good. I'm not gonna try to be that careful because I'm just—I already know I'm gonna have to redo that hose. Sometimes I'm impa I'm an impatient painter. Just want it done. <laughs> then I gotta then I pay the price. I want it done, and then I go. Why didn't I just take my time and do it? A nice job, and then I would have saved all that time fixing stuff, and then I'm kicking myself. So I don't know. If you're a painter. <clears throat> Take your time, I guess. It's worth it. But I get impatient. You yeah, know. What can I say? This means I have more cleanup to do. So this really is the base coat, I guess. You know, the black was just so that the metallic would pop pop off the off the black surface. Kind of like a undercoating. Metallics would pop really nice off black. In case you're wondering. Rad, let's hear about it for sure. So right now, so far, couple things here. <clears throat> so Neo Kazama says that they're finishing up the Norris spider head that they were mentioned that they were working on. That looked really cool. Yeah, I saw pictures of that on, that they shared. That was looking really good. 
they're also revamping the studio as well. Nice. That's always good to do because, like, I just redid my studio, and it's funny how that can just give you a lot of um, new energy. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I'd recommend to a lot of artists to revamp their studio, man. Um, it's a hassle. It's a pain in the ass, but, man, it'll just give you a new... I don't know what it is. You clean up your studio, you make it nice. It just gives you a new um, flow and a new energy. Something about it, man. It's actually funny you mentioned that. I actually just recently did that with my bedroom where I went through and I just reorganized and yeah. like scaled down and compressed a lot of stuff. And yeah. I like took a look at it when it was all said and done, and I'm like, oh man, I'm so happy I did that. Yeah, it's oh, always God. like. It's always like, oh, crap, I know I got to do this. I don't want to do it, and you avoid it. But then, like, it's so worth it in the long run, like, all the hard work. Yeah. Yeah, and you throw it forces you to throw stuff away or just reorganize or, I don't know. Man, we just did that with my studio because we have the, the upcoming class, and we had no choice. <laughs> had oh, we to. actually we just got a comment from the Shiflet Brothers on YouTube. They just mentioned, yeah, clean up the, or a cleaned up area always makes me feel better. Nice, <laughs> yeah, yeah. See, I mean, it's true. It's it's one of those things that uh, it gives you like um, a new feng shui or whatever you want to call it. You know, it just it gives it it energizes you a bit more. You, I you you start to get like I, I was feeling this way in my studio. You start to get like a compressed feeling, like like everything closing in around you kind of thing. And everywhere you look, if it's messy or whatever, you're you're just like, oh, I can't look over there. I can't look over here. <laughs> and then you just, you're not, um, you're not being very um, uh, productive, you know? At least I find I'm not being very productive. So then, you know, cleaning it all up and, and reorganizing, man, it, it actually increases your productivity for sure. And just gives you new energy to motivation. Um, I don't know. Yeah. 100%. Worth it. Pain in the butt, though. Especially if you have a lot of stuff in your studio like I do. Mm -hmm. Oh, my God. Just tackling it bit by bit. Yep. And I actually am not the one that thinks of where things should go. <laughs> I'm a, I'm horrible, man. I, I, if I'm looking at clutter or a big mess, I don't know what the hell should go where. It's My wife is the one that she comes in and she's just got the organize, the brain to organize, you know, like this should go here, that should go here, that go there. And my job is just to argue that, no, I don't like that idea, but then in the end I lose because she's right. So, there you go. No, I don't want that over there. Oh, all right, I guess, yeah. No, it's better. <laughs> That's for other people that are working on stuff right now. Oh, yeah, what else we got? Sorry, I no, got okay. off track there. We got uh, Jason Giaconetti. I hope I'm pronouncing that right again. I'm sorry if I'm not. Uh, Mentioned that they've just finished uh, Casey's Tormented Wall Hanger, and Tormented. they're working on a Lab Mutant book. I think it was the oh, yeah. Lab Mutant book. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tormented Wall Hanger. Is that the uh, the Frankenstein thing with reaching out of the wall? Is that is that what that is? It might be. I'll have them. Uh, Jason, if you're still in the chat, can you clarify which one that is? Like, it goes with the vampire and the, the werewolf and all that, I think. Wow. That's a rare thing if he's got one. I haven't seen one of those in ages. I think the original guy that was producing that, I, I forget what happened, man. It just uh, took forever to come out. and I don't know what happened with all those, those things. Lovecraft Two Heads. Okay. Lovecraft Two Heads? Why am I blanking right now? Probably just don't really remember anymore. 
Oh, 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 oh my God! The, go. <laughs> the, ge- the 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 geometric, mm-hmm. the geometric piece, the Lovecraft. Yes, sorry. Oh my gosh, I I totally went spacey on there. I was thinking of something totally different. Oh, they said they posted it on the Facebook group too. Yes. The Monday okay. Night yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh my God, sorry, Jason. Yeah, duh. That's right. I I was thinking of this other kid I did of a Franken mutant thing that came out of a wall. Um. Anyway, I'm I'm sorry. Yeah. And, um, yeah, the thing piece was cool, man. Um, I, you know, not to bring that back to me or anything, but I, I, I was honored to be one of the artists working on, um, the remake, not the remake. I shouldn't call it that. It's not the remake, (laughs) the prequel to the thing movie in 2011, I think something like that. I worked on, uh, as a as a concept artist and a and a sculptor on the final uh pieces for the thing movie the prequel prequel thing i think it was 2011 it was it, it you know everybody knows it turned out horrifically bad the way it did, <laughs> and, the way it did yeah and uh and that was definitely not the fault of um the effects people or effects studio behind it, which was uh, ADI. It was uh, a CG person who thought they could do better than us and insisted on doing it CG, took it out of our hands, unfortunately, and um, did what they did with it. Basically murdered all the traditional effects <laughs> with bad CG. Speaking of, didn't the 40th anniversary of the thing just pass? It did, yeah. There was a theater show. Um, there was, a, there was a. You could go see it right in the theater. Yeah, super awesome, man. Oh yeah, Chris Dawson just mentioned that they're going Wednesday night to go see it. Yeah, that's cool, man. Shit, I should go see that. That'd be great. I might too. My girlfriend's really into horror movies. So I might go see that. Yeah, you can't go wrong with that one, man. That's a classic. It's a great film. Young Kurt Russell. Yeah, dude, Kurt Russell rules. We, I was just talking. We were just talking about him and Goldie Hawn, right? They're still together and and all that. Keith just... David is the other film they mentioned too, right? What's that? Keith David. Keith David, the yeah. yeah, yeah, from um. Gargoyles he plays uh Goliath or voices Goliath. Yeah, and he's the guy in um, they live. Mm-hmm. He fights. He gets into a fight with uh. Roddy Piper. Roddy Piper, man, that, that that fight scene, man. Yeah, that's so cool. Yeah, he's in it, man. Yep. Giles, right? Is it Giles? Is that yeah, the, is I it? Yeah. think so. I should yeah. totally know that. Uh oh. <laughs> it's been a while. Yeah. And the Quaker Oats guy. Oh, Collier Wilm mentioned that they're working on a mini comic right now. Like as you're uh, doing everything you're doing. A oh, um, child, Jason said. Oh, okay. Um, a mini comic. Yeah. Very cool. Very cool. Awesome. Yeah, that's cool, man. It's so cool to hear like every what everyone else is doing during the stream. And uh, thanks to the Shiflet brothers for chiming in. Mm-hmm. If uh, if you know our fan base here is not familiar, which I can't imagine they're not, but if they're not familiar, there's please um, if you're a sculptor or whatever painter, um, please check out the the Shiflet brothers uh, sculpting forum on Facebook because that is a great place that's been well established for years even prior to facebook it was a a forum that was really well established and then they brought it to facebook with all the you know social media outlets now i mean that's where you bring things so but uh brandon jared and brandon have run that for a long time and and dedicated many many i don't know (laughs) endless hours to 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 that forum so that's another great one if you're on 
Facebook, you, you, it's really a must to join that forum and be a part of that one. There's so many great things posted over there, too. So not just, you know, the Monday Night Monster Jam, but go to that one and join if you're not already. But I imagine most of our, our, our uh, guys have already joined that one. But if you're not, go check it out because you're missing out. I know, too, that last week there was a fellow who was asking about breaking into the Super Street. That'd be mm-hmm. a good place to hit up, too, if they haven't already. I forget what their name was. but Yeah, I mean, because the, the cool thing, too, is, you know, they're getting uh, a lot of sculptors, for, for one. So if you're if you're looking for sculpture advice or or you want to get ed, um, your work shown to other sculptors and just just kind of mingle and talk about sculpture, I mean it's great because there's not just traditional, it's digital, it's everything you know, sculpture related, um, and uh, you you really really it's a good super good resource. So um, many many great artists there. And uh, they just came out with a new book on sculpting for you traditional guys that want traditional stuff. Or, you know, even for digital guys that want to see uh, how traditional stuff is done. Because you can learn from both mediums. That's a, that, the Schiffler Brothers new book is, is, is one you got to get. So definitely hit them up for that too. Support them on that, please. It's an awesome book. They put a lot of... Hard, hard work into that book. So it looks amazing. I gotta, I gotta buy one. I haven't bought one yet. I'm, I'm gonna buy one. I'm gonna do it this week. I'm such a lazy bastard. Sorry, guys. I, <laughs> I don't know what the hell's taking me so long. I, I need that book. It has to be in set this reminder, library back here. <laughs> set a reminder on your phone. Yeah, uh, I'm gonna hit you guys up this week. I, I gotta get it. So stupid. I have it because I want to share it on here too. Mm-hmm. I want to share a little bit on here if that's okay with them because, man. I think it's it was is so awesome, such a tremendous book. Um, all right, so I I mean I base coded this just roughly, crudely, quickly, not you know taking time to care about every little thing. I'll fix the skin and all that later. Um, this hose, what you can do, like you know, now I want this hose black. Like I said, I'm gonna get sloppy and stupid. That's okay. That's what these are for. So, you know, if you need to correct that, like I do, um, you know, better to just <laughs> try not to get metal paint all over the area you need black, but um, you can just go back and correct it like this with a little bit of black paint. This hose is supposed to be kind of like a a rubber. I think I use a real rubber piece of hose, actually, to do this. Uh, well, I just laid it in the clay. Oh, yeah, just a, a piece of rubber. I think weather stripping or something. That's what it looks like. So, you know, if you want to get that, you can go back. But, you know, I shouldn't even bother with this now because, honestly, I'm going to get... I should do this last because I'm going to get all this weathering on it. So I'm pretty much just uh, wasting time. While you guys are watching me waste time painting black that I don't need to bother with right now. So we'll skip that. But I was just showing you guys, you know, that's what you do later. So just go back and carefully do the, the black on it over the metal, and you're good. You know, clean it up. You'll be all good. But so uh, I'm going to let this dry for a sec here. So we'll chat with some of our folks here, take questions, maybe one or two quick ones, because um, I'm going to let this paint dry for a minute. Otherwise, you could watch me just blow on this. But that's So, one question that we have right now. Yeah, one question we have so far in the chat is from David Felchek. And David Felchek says that they're looking for some tips on setting up a small studio in their home. They're actually in the middle of converting a bedroom into an art studio specifically for mass making. Oh. Also wondering. if they can sculpt with wet clay in the same room that they paint in. So it's kind of two questions. Can I oh. sculpt and paint in the same room? And also, do you have any tips on uh, making a small studio in your home? 
Uh, those are great questions, and I do because I've done all of what you're saying right now. I've done it all. I've done that um, many times. Uh, back years ago, um, 2008 or nine, I was living in a three-bedroom apartment with my wife. We had one kid at the time. And uh, so I had an extra room, and I had a studio in a room. I had a studio in a loft at one point. We switched it all different ways. Um, yeah, it's tricky because hopefully you don't have carpet. Carpet's a no-no in a studio. If you do have carpet, I would highly suggest to preserve the carpet for one so you don't have to pay money later when you move out of there. Um, just go get that cheap wood flooring laminate stuff from Home Depot and just put a layer uh, over the carpet, like uh, like basically those wood slat, the cheap fake wood slats. Plus, you can make your studio look rad that way. I would cover the carpet uh, to protect it because you'll ruin it uh, for sure, especially if you're getting wet clay in there. Um, you need something you can clean uh, with wet clay. You need something you can clean. What, uh, the one problem with wet clay um, I'm going to tell you guys about and share with you, if you've ever read The Side of the Box, it, there is a, a caution warning with wet clay that it does cause cancer. And it's not that when the clay is fresh out of the bag that's the problem. The problem is all those little pieces that dry up on your table and turn to dust and dry dust powder. And what happens if you ever worked with wet is all that dusty stuff, when you sweep it up, it floats in the air, and that can get in your lungs, and that's the problem. So the problem is not when it's wet. So a lot of times when I sculpt masks, when I get a layer of that dust built up on my table, I s spray it down with water and then wipe it up and throw that away. Because if you dust it up with a dust pan, you're letting all the particles float in the air. Or we use in the effect shops clean sweep, you know, to keep the dust down. Um, you can also wear a mask, you know, a little dust mask helps. Uh, so you're not breathing that stuff in when you're cleaning up. So keep, be cautious of wet clay that way. The dry wet clay is the problem when it's all dried up. Um, mold making is an issue, right? Because if you get plaster in your carpet or you get plaster anywhere, it's messy. It's dusty as well. When you're mixing plaster, you're, you're dumping it into the water. It's dust. Plaster dust is rising, so you got to wear a mask. Just be cautious about it because you're in a room in an apartment it's tricky. Pouring latex in there is not real good. Make sure you have air ventilation of some kind, a window or something. You can pull air into the room. Um, yeah, and latex, if it gets in the carpet, if you have carpet, I'm just assuming that's a nightmare. That's a nightmare. So I would put down, if you don't have carpet, great. But if you do, put down a wood floor, a fake wood floor, or some kind of something to, to, to protect where you're going to be working, I mean, I would just completely cover it with that fake uh, floor paneling, which is really cheap at Home Depot. You can lay it right over top of stuff. Uh, it's great. So um, what was the other thing he was asking? Setting up, uh, get good lighting. You can get cheap lighting. Get yourself some good lighting in the, in the studio. Um, some overhead lamps and some lighting you can maybe easily hang up somehow. Uh um, I've done this. This works great. Um, and you can do it a couple different ways. I've gotten kitchen, kitchen countertops. They're not cheap. You can go to Home Depot and get corner sections, kitchen countertops, which are nice and deep, and they and you can clean stuff off of them easily with alcohol or water. Um, but you can do corners, uh, and you can either mount brackets in the wall. The only problem is it creates giant holes in the wall because you need to hit the studs in the wall mount kitchen countertops uh as a work working desk um i used to do that all the time in apartments but you gotta then fix the wall holes later so <laughs> you know you got these giant holes um or you can um build like a frame of some sort to hold that up that's an, there's another way to do it but i always just mounted the brackets so that's nice you can do kitchen countertops nice floor Turn it into a full studio, put some shelves up, lighting. And you don't need to spend too much money. A few hundred bucks will do it, really, you know. Dad makes in the chat is mentioning um, using 
and there's a one inch uh, floor matting like they have in gyms. So yeah. The ones that kind of interlock. I don't yep. That'd be another method. It's that's another one. That's a cheap way to go instead of laying the floor pieces, uh, the matting. Um, the the matting. The only thing it's uh, it's hard to clean. It's it's hard to clean the matting, and especially latex, it'll stick to it, and it's gonna, it's gonna be almost impossible to get off. Sometimes, uh, or if you're doing resin casting, it's gonna stick. The wood floor is a little nicer, but again, it's gonna get messy. But that's the whole point. I mean, the whole point is to have the floor you're not worried about. Um, but yeah, matting's good good one too. Um, you could do that on top of the wood floor too if you want cushion just to stand on if you're standing for a long time. Um, you can use milk crates to hold your molds if you need to, uh, so they don't fall over on you in, in the, inside the apartment. Uh, there's lots of things you can do, man. There's so much. Um, I've done so many different things that way and there's, God, it's endless. I mean, go to Ikea, go to, uh, Home Depot, look around, you'll be amazed. Um, there's so many different options, but the kitchen countertops are nice. I, I have a table now that I made out of a uh, um, a wood. What is it? A, uh, it's that thing there is a butcher's butcher's table. You can buy butcher tables uh, at the at Home Depot. A big thick chunk of nice wood. They're not cheap, but they work good too for for a for a table. So, last a while too. Yeah, yeah, last forever, man. Yeah. And actually, you can just set that on two IKEA bookshelves if you don't want to build a frame. <laughs> so there's so many different things. All right. I think where paint's dry, so thank you for the question. That's a good one for sure. Um, there's many options. Definitely just resource out what you want to do, come up with a game plan, a budget. It's always and... the best part, too, is like planning out your space. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's fun, man. It's fun to get your – and once you get it done, man, you're just going to sit back and be like, oh, my God, you're going to be so ready to be creative. That's the great part. Okay, so I think our paint is dry enough here. We've got this metallic um, lead belcher, whatever color here. So I'm going to run through some of some similar process of aging that we did on the patina this time around, since I pictured this as something that was painted with metal underneath and it's patinaed and all this. Now I'm going to go on the armor and kind of do the same weathering effects similar but like over this metal now there's some things you could do you know there's other options obviously if i had an airbrush hooked up here i could uh like let's say you you you're not happy with this metallic look like you're like you know what i want this metallic to be a little something else there are some um translucent paints on the market that badger and other companies make that you can overspray, which won't lose the sheen of the metal but change the tone okay so like i could make it kind of bluish or purplish or red or whatever you know i could go in and 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 shift some of this metallic tone to something else if i wanted to uh but i'm not going to mess with that tonight too much it's just i'm telling you options here there's some options and uh but uh i think what we're gonna do or at least what i have in mind is to uh throw some patina on this but not cover all of it obviously like we did last time we just patinaed the whole thing this time i think we're gonna uh change up a little bit let me grab It's always hard to remember everything I need for these shows. So, okay. So, I think we'll sponge this. If you guys remember, I like these sea sponges a lot. You can do a lot with these. So, I'm, I'm just taking this color from last week. And I'm mixing some water to thin it, just to thin it down a little bit.
And then I've got this sea sponge, which we can take this and start to throw some patina. And now you'll know why I didn't bother with that black leather stripping, because <laughs> this would just get all over the place on it. But I'm going to try to sort of attempt to age the metal down and give it some patina weathering. Because, uh, you know, judging by how weathered his jaw is, unless this metal had some sort of magic protection or, I don't know, some sort of weathered protection on it, it wouldn't age. But that's not fun. It doesn't look, you know, that won't, that won't work. These guys should look like they've been through it all. When you're doing that, are you pressing down super hard or are you just kind of like tapping? Good question. Really like That's a good question. I'm just lightly tapping. And then as you watch, I'm going to switch from the side with paint to the clean side, which takes away paint. So it's adding and then taking away, adding and taking away. And really just getting a breakup on the overall surface. The tricky part is getting down in this collar, man. Had I sculpted this head separately, it would have been much easier to paint some of this. Here, but uh, yeah, John Eubank knows what I'm talking about since he just painted one of these recently. <laughs> Probably cursing me when he was doing this. God damn it! You make it this God, way? God damn it, Casey! What you do this for? <laughs> God damn it! <laughs> and that is why this show is not for kids. Do we need to do a, a kid version of this show so we can become like YouTube stars? Just every time we curse, it's just like you just make fun of Beep, beep. <laughs> yeah, no, it's not even, you know what I mean? It's like uh, some of these uh, YouTube guys that are aiming towards the kids, man. They're just getting these kids watching these shows over and over again. Yeah. My son would watch show, at least some of these shows, man. It was just like, I just remember sitting there going like, I'm like watching my son and he's watching these YouTubers over and over and over. And, and I, I can't tell you how many times I would see the same episode. And I was just sitting there going like in my mind, like cha-ching, cha-ching, cha-ching. Because, <laughs> dude, and then the, like you would see like you'd see, you know, like one million three hundred thousand views, you know, on their channel. And then you're like, oh, my God. And then. And then, like, you know, six months in, the family just moved to a new gigantic home that they didn't yeah. have before. <laughs> and you're like, well, I helped pay for that. My son, my son helped pay for that home. Yeah. It's like, holy moly, man. Yeah. Yeah, buddy. YouTube dreams do come true. Um, so anyway, I'm just going to patina the hell out of it. Not, not as much as the jaw, though. You can still see there's some metal coming through. But definitely looks weathered and I want it to look interesting. As I was saying, I mean, you know, the, the another way... Another way to go is to do it just like the jaw. That would be kind of cool, too. That could look cool. But I don't see these as, like, the same metals exactly. I think they're a little different. I actually have a pretty timely question come, uh, about this process that you're doing right now. Okay. Uh, from Cast of a Thousand, or Cast of Thousand Studio. Oh, that's my buddy from uh, Washington. They're asking, Tim. Uh, do you ever use Gazillion? Stipple brushes, which is 
something like this, like what you're doing right now? No, I, you know, I, that's my buddy, Tim. What's up, Tim? Um, you know, no, I, I have no idea what those are. I haven't heard of them, but if you have a link or something that you could share with us, I would love to check them out. Um, I think I've heard of, I, I have seen stipple brushes. I, I take that back. Uh, but I haven't heard of that brand. I'm just curious because it seems like, you know, a stipple brush, I could probably get into some tighter areas, which would be nice to have. So yeah, if you have a link to that, it'd be great. And Tim, I hope you're doing well, buddy. I know I haven't talked to you in a while. Hope you're well. Hope things are good. Are you still living in Washington? I think you are. If I remember, you're still up there. Tim's got a nice studio, too. I've seen some pictures of his studio uh, at, his, at his house. He's got, like, a studio there. So, Yeah, if I had, like, a stipple brush, I could get into some of these really hard-to-get areas there's a, unfortunately when i you know i was lazy about when i sculpted this but i you know i was on a time crunch for a show and i didn't have time to separate the head and all that but yeah would have been it would have been nice to do that oh my pronunciation was off actually delium what what are they called delium D delium okay i was calling them the delium I haven't heard. That's just my dyslexia going off. No, no worries. No, <laughs> no worries. No worries. I haven't heard of, of that brand, so I'm curious to see what they look like. Um, but oh, I, like Tim Sand. Yep, still up in Washington. Awesome, awesome. Yep. Yeah, I lived for seven years. I'm a California native, but I lived for seven years in Washington State, on on uh, this island called Fox Island, and Tim was. One of the effects guys and one of the few guys I ran into up there and got to become friends with for a number of years and uh, I shared, you know, the same interests and all that. We sculpted together for a minute or two and it was a lot of fun. Um, him and Steve West were my two buddies up in that area, that rainy city. <laughs> it wasn't too rainy, though. It was more gloomy than rainy. I know parts of it can be pretty rainy, but it's beautiful up there. It looks like a Bernie Wrightson painting come to life up there. It's kind of cool. Now, so I've patinaed this all out. Now, you could, if you're not happy with, let's say, on your piece that you're doing this on, if you go, oh, you know, I put too much. I want to see more metal. Well, you could just stipple with the, with the sponge. You could just stipple metal back over and then bring more metal back out. But I, like I was saying, I think this is pretty weathered and, you know, the armors, the pretty armor is going bye-bye. So we're going to go with that uh, for this demo. Okay, so now the next thing is kind of similar to what I showed you guys last week. And that is some of this, um, you know, stippling of these rusty tones and and we can get into some chipping chipping and things like that too so and i mean listen you can get into like layers upon layers like you could go in and and paint another color or another metallic color like that was underneath this color and you could get into like multi layers of chipping i mean i've done that before there's all kinds of stuff so you know you got to really think through what you want it to look like and then what those layers will be. So for this purpose, what am I doing here? Let's try this. Uh, maybe this lighter rust. Let's try that first. Is that the rust set you were using last week? Yeah, same set I was using last week because I was like, you know what, this will work for this as well. This is kind of a. This is kind of a thicker. And here, I'll show, you know, just for dem demonstration, like this is a thicker rust paint. It's not a wash. So, like, if you wanted to, I mean, this is, you know, you could go in and start putting in really big rust spots and stuff by hand like that. So that's that's one way you can start putting in some rust. And we'll do some of that. But for now, actually, what I want to do 
is just throw some light rust in. But you know, I think I'll skip that one because it's not going to show up that much. Let's just do. Let's just go straight for the straight to the source. Let's go with some of this. All right. I know I make these kooky little noises sometimes. Uh oh. You know what I gotta do? I better before I make a giant mess here. Clean up some of this. Let's put a little water to that. Thin out our rust. Just a little bit. And we'll do our old sponge trick again. Make sure the sponge is not too wet. There we go. So this would just be like a little. Now I'm probably gonna be more cautious about this step because I don't wanna turn this whole thing orange. But I do want to just do a light under layering of rust coming off through the patina. And you guys can do, you know, like any way you want to do these steps, you can kind of just play around with it and try things out. Because, you, know, you know, all I'm doing here is winging it. I'm not even following any procedure procedure or any specific way like oh you have to do it like this or these lay you could you could kind of play around with whatever you want and try things out and see what you like i'm just making it up as i go so what i'm saying is if you don't like the way i'm doing it you can do it any way you want pretty much up to your imagination how you want to make it look so I'll do a little bit of that there we go ow I just hit my elbow <laughs> so I'm gonna clean out that and then <clears throat> I think we're gonna do next is we're going to run into some of this darker, rusty wash. And we're going to kind of run some of this into the cracks and crevices where the rust would collect. We need some uh, space mutant music or something. <laughs> that was bad. That was a bad attempt. All right, so, and you know, you guys should, when you're doing this, take your time. I'm going quickly because we obviously don't have a ton of time, but just more for demo, show you the basic techniques. Yeah, you can weather this out however you want. You could do so many different things. 
I'm just letting this rusty uh, stuff collect in these little details. Of course, you can have like, or maybe rain or, or some sort of something has run down the back of this collar. You can build it up too. You can do, you know, you can go back over it after it dries. Do another layer, get some darker orange rust in there. Be real loose with it too. Don't don't try to, you know, it needs to be random, and you don't want it to uh, look forced. You want it to look natural somehow. So you know, don't make the same streaks everywhere. Like do them, break them up, make them a little different. You know, maybe it's not always streaks. Some other. So yeah. Anyway, could go for days with that. Um, and then you know we can go to these darker colors like we did last time, <clears throat> and start adding chipping. And if we wanted to mix it up a little, you know, we can even. I think I mentioned to you guys we can add a little black to this dark brown. We can get it darker. We really want to get some dark chip flavor, chocolatey chip. Maybe not that dark. Let me go a little, little bit lighter. Oop! Did I just mix the wrong color. I think I did. Well, maybe not. I don't know. No, I guess that was it. <laughs> anyway, whatever. So you can go darker with this. And you can do, you know, like chipping and things like that. Maybe along the edge here. Did he rip it up? Yeah. Rad. Son just went skateboarding at the skate park. So I'm going along this edge, you know. Obviously, this edge is banged into some things along the way. You know, these foot soldiers are walking next to tanks and necro tanks and necro this and necro that or whatever. So maybe they're getting a little banged up. 
And you remember last week I, I did this first, you know, I mean, now I'm just doing it after. So you could do it at any point and then just go back and keep working the layers. can even get like pull the paint off your brush and just scrape make some scrapes yeah along that shoulder there just something like scraped into it or ran into it so there's think of different things you can do to weather So you kind of have to experiment with this stuff like you can try all all kinds of different things and see what works making it really chipped up and aged. Some old iron or whatever this is made out of. When I would do it with the uh, more of the pearls or metallic Tones, you know, it definitely has a more <clears throat> alien built vibe. So, this is more of your deep sea diver suit, steel, rusty, whatever. But it's okay. So, 
but you need like that spacey astronaut high tech suit look you could go with the metallic colors or, or pearlescence as your base tone and, and then work all this over top of those in the same fashion it works out really good it's more um high tech or or sort of uh I don't know. <laughs> That's quite a bit. So I think we'll chill on that. I think we'll stop right there for a minute. And... stop right there for a sec and then we'll do artist share and um yeah we'll do artist share and questions and then we'll go back to armor armor effects oh man artist share i didn't even pick anybody yet <laughs> <laughs> who's it gonna be who's the lucky winner who's the lucky um, there's so many guys I could share right now. Um, I'm looking around my studio and stuff. You know what we're going to do? Hard to choose. Uh, where's my... We're going to do this guy because he, so we're going to do this, especially since he was on my uh, Instagram live. <laughs> I can't believe I haven't shared this already. Oh, this is a big one. All right. Just makes sense to do this one. Actually, I'm going to have to move this out of here. I don't want to get paint on this. But, okay. So, I say <laughs> we share this. And if you don't have these sets of books, man, what is wrong with you? You have to buy this set tonight if you don't have it. Yeah. I want to get paint on this. Uh, let's just share Rick Baker because why not, man? You can't go wrong with that. How could you? So this is a set of two books that he put out of his whew, career. Like when I say whew, it's because that's what it is, man. When you think about uh, influence, um, a guy that... I don't even put into words, man. I mean, Rick is the legendary wizard, <laughs> effects wizard guy that comes to my mind when I think of special effects makeup and special effects career. I mean, it's it's Rick is the first one to pop in my head. Um, I think because he had the biggest influence on me um, when it comes to special effects of anyone. I mean... Nobody had uh, as much of an impact on me as Rick. I mean, you can talk about Star Wars Cantina masks. You can talk about The Incredible Melting Man. We can talk about American Werewolf in London. We can talk about, you know, Octoman, his early stuff, which is so cool. And, and the list goes on and on and on. And um, they always say in the special effects industry if you ever were lucky enough to work for rick even just once that would always be your highlight and that's exactly what happened to me back around 2013 i believe it was um where i ran into rick at a show 
And um, <laughs> this is a funny story. I ran into Rick at Monster Palooza. I had a table there. And I got a tip from someone. Uh, actually, it was the, the owner of the show, Elliot. He said, hey, uh, he came over to my table and he goes, hey, just letting you know, uh, Rick, Rick's wandering in the museum if you want to go say hi. And I was like, what? <laughs> He's what? All right. So I ran over to say hi to Rick real quick, you know, and, and uh, didn't want to bug him, you know. He's trying to see the show. But I want to say hi and before I missed him because you can easily miss people at these shows. It's crazy how that happens. Um, and at the time, I was working for ADI, another effects shop where we did the thing um, prequel I was talking about. And uh, my boss from that shop, Alec Gillis, <laughs> happened to be wandering around in the museum. And I was saying hi to Rick and, and talking to Rick. And Rick had begun to tell me about that he was working on Men in Black 3 or gearing up, going to be gearing up to work on Men in Black 3. And he would like, you know, wondering if, if I'd like to work on the show. Well, there walks up my boss from my other effects shop, Alec. <laughs> he kind of overhears that. And then they had this quick conversation joking around, you know, making me sweat a little bit about, um, yeah, Casey can go over there after he's done working with us. You know? <laughs> yeah, when I'm done with him, then you can have him. Uh, it was pretty funny. And uh, but anyway, afterwards, Rick said, "Hey, where's do you have a table here?" I said, "Yes." And he came. He said, "Okay, I'll come see you, and I'll come check you out over there after I get out of here." I was like, "All right, great." So uh, he came over. We talked more, and then um, about a week or two. Uh, or after the show was over, went home, blah, 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 Rick called me. But at the same time, I was getting a call from uh, another shop called Spectral Motion, a guy named Mike Elizalde, another great artist that I want to share on here. And um, they were gearing up. So I was like, oh, my God, which place am I going to? But uh, Rick got me first, and then he, he gave me a gig, um, Man in Black 3, with uh, a lot of amazing artists and friends I knew and people. And anyway... It's not about me. This, this. I'm just thanking Rick for bringing me in on a show because that truly, that show did turn out to be uh, what I always call or or refer to as the highlight career, uh, highlight show of my career is in special makeup effects. When you go to work for someone like Rick Baker, you're, you're. That's the top of the top, and there's no going above that. So it was uh surreal incredible it was like someone saying you're gonna go to work at disneyland every day and it's just gonna be magic every day and that's what it was it was that much fun and incredible so i always thankful that rick brought me in it was one of his last big shows and it was incredible so um but yeah let me pull out some of these books because rick's career is vast as everyone knows i mean everyone knows who rick baker is this book is incredible um this set of books is incredible i mean i can't flip through all of it now let's pull out let's just pull out one of these because we won't have time to look through all of it if you don't have these books you you are uh not living man the, the, i mean if you don't have these books you you, you got to order this book uh so I remember Rick showing me a quick preview of stuff in here back when um, I was working on Men in Black. You know, he was showing me a little bit of it, and um, I was just blown away by it. But, I mean, let's just go through some of this as quickly as possible. There he is with John Landis, of course, American Werewolf. Um, you know, some of his... Like, th this stuff is incredible. His early years, man. Like, seeing <laughs> seeing how young he was, like, starting makeup was insane. Like, he's just a little kid trying makeup at such a young age. Um, I don't know if I can find it. There was one, there was one yeah, he spells Dracula incorrectly when he, <laughs> he showed me this when he was a kid. <laughs> <laughs> it's so awesome but yeah <laughs> so i mean yeah richard he's 
writing Richard Baker. But I mean, this shows. I mean, look, he's this. This was him pulling. I believe he told me his first mask ever out of a mold. You know. So the thing is with with Rick, you know. Um, one of the things you start to notice. I mean, this is all his early career. You know, very very early. Bob, Bob Burns, and all, his, and you know, who was a good friend of his, and um, one of his first gigs. I think. Uh, I think they were working on. This is a shop I think he worked at on Gumby and stuff like that. Yeah. So, but anyhow, so let's fast forward a little bit here. You know, obviously he meets Dick Smith and he goes through the whole story. You got to read this book. I mean, it's incredible. This book is insane, but I just want to flip through and show there's Octoman. I mean, again, this is his early, early, early days. And, you know, he's got all... As, as everyone knows, Rick, he's fascinated with gorillas, gorilla suits. And as we get further and further into his career, you know, the more insanely talented <laughs> he becomes, obviously. And obviously, he helped on The Exorcist, Dick Smith, Incredible Melting Man. Um, it's Alive. And so on and so forth. And I mean, you know, so many movies. Uh, King Kong. It's endless. It's endless. There's the Melting Man. This is one of my favorite things. Besides the Fun House freak. And, well, many things. I mean, I can't even name. This is one of my favorite Cantina Aliens. This uh, brainy guy. So cool. So Rick, you know, Rick worked on the original Star Wars Cantina Aliens. Designed a lot of them. Which, funny funny enough, they're just a, if you think about it, they're monsters. Like, this is a, like, to me, this reminds me of, like, a Frankenstein. One's a werewolf. They're totally not even aliens. It's like, Rick just sort of, like, <laughs> he just decided, I'm going to put monsters in. <laughs> I mean, there's some that look like aliens, but it's not an alien. It's a freaking werewolf <laughs> in Star Wars. But that's so rad. That was... That was what made it cool, man. Um, and of course, there were some that looked like aliens, but I mean, funny enough, a lot of them were just monsters, you know. Devil, there's a devil in the cantina. So, yeah, but you start to see, and I mean, this is just book one. Oh God, this thing, yeah, this is one of my favorite things. This is so awesome, Funhouse Freak. This was a, a howling concept. That he did for the Howling before he took on American Werewolf. And this was a concept for Night Skies, which was basically E.T. Before E.T. When it was like a horror thing, actually. And these were the alien, these alien creatures he was working on. You know, creepy little puppets and stuff with animatronics. Although this one's kind of cutesy looking. But the thing, the one of the things, here's the transformation under Skull to American Werewolf. You can see he's starting to design ideas and things for American Werewolf in London, how they're going to do it. Then what they made, his crew, which a lot of these guys went on to be other famous effects artists. Um, but the, the one thing uh, that's interesting about Rick's stuff is when you see some of it, some of these sculptures uh, in real life in front of you, like when I saw, when I was at his shop and I saw some of these, like this wolf head, I saw an actual casting of this from the mold. It blew my mind just how clean and, and without hair on it, of course, it had no hair, but like up in the forehead here, there's wrinkles and things you just don't see on this because it's covered that he put in there. Um, it's, and it's amazing sculpting. Um, you know, one of my favorite things, I don't know if it's in here was, like, here's the famous apes. I mean, again, just amazing. But one of my favorite things is his troll. And it's, it's one of every effects artist's favorite things is like a troll that he did. Let me see if I can, oh, hopefully I didn't pass it. Oh, there's the Michael Jackson, you know. Did I pass the troll? Hopefully I didn't pass the troll. 
carrying the Hendersons. That's an amazing sculpture. So, I mean, you, you're, you see this whole book, man. It's, it's incredible. I don't know if I passed the troll. But anyway, he did this troll that everyone knows, and I got to see it in person uh, at his shop. Actually, I had, had a copy of it sitting by my desk where I worked. And, man, I just remember thinking, like, how ahead of his time he was as a sculptor. That's what I was trying to get at in, in what I'm saying here. Because the truth is, like, his sculpting, and, and it's this era, too, the, in this 80s era when he did Greystoke and all this. The sculpting that was done, man, is, it's, it's mind-blowing, especially in person. I mean, it... It's it's amazing. Look at this. This is freaking cool. I just I just realized I don't think I even saw this last time. Let me get back to it. Where where was it? Look at these werewolf things. <clears throat> this cool like old werewolf concept. Obviously like a zombie werewolf thing. Yeah. So I mean these books and then his his second book is his later career. You know, going more into the later career of of all the studio work and everything. So, I mean, this, this is a set of books you have to have. Just, there's no way, there's no two ways about it. So if you don't have that book from Rick Baker, you should get it. Unfortunately, I don't have any other like real piece of art from Rick. You know, I wish I had a mask or something that he, that he did. I don't have that, but uh, those books are like treasures to me. I do have this beautiful painting behind me that, that is Rick. Um, that he did of Glenn Strange. He's a painter. He's a sculptor. He's a special effects wizard. He can do it all, and he still does. He still creates stuff. So if you uh, like to see some more from Rick Baker, you've got to follow his Instagram. Um, look up Rick Baker on Instagram. He's always posting such cool videos. Uh, you, you, you will be your mind will be blown. And and then he does these. He's done these amazing Halloween. Uh, 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 different Halloween shows at his house and things over the years, you know, makeups on his daughters that are just mind blowing. Um, he's got some videos on YouTube. In fact, he's got a video on YouTube on how to sculpt in latex and do an appliance. It's amazing, man. A Miss Shock thing. You should see what he's doing. Um, it's, I could go on for days. I could talk for, for days about Rick Baker. So, uh, but I'll stop here because. As you can tell, he's a huge influence on me. Uh, if you don't have those two books, get those books. Um, and uh, here's to Rick for all the years of inspiration, man. I have been inspired and still am constantly inspired by you and your work daily. So thank you so much, Rick. Appreciate everything you've done for me and to inspire all special effects artists and up-and-coming artists. You're definitely a legend, man. All right, so let's run into our next segment, which is questions. And we can get into some questions about the process or whatever people want to talk about, man. Let's do it. Here we go. All right, so our first question actually comes from Magneto Creation. Magneto, thanks for the questions, man. The question. <laughs> this is one he actually asked a little earlier tonight. Um, Magneto was wondering if you had any recommendations on Canadian mask vendors to purchase blank fit custom, custom, uh, or like custom uh, paint or whatnot. Canadian guess, mask vendors. Yeah, he's wondering because um, import taxes, being what they are currently, are murder. Mm -hmm. I know that too because I'm trying to. I was trying to get something from Canada, and it's like, oh. The import tax is about like fifty five percent of the like, asking oh, price. Oh man, I like, can imagine. The, okay, I'm not doing that. Dude, these price increases on everything lately is out of control, man. Insane. Like shit needs to stop. Like seriously, it's it's getting ridiculous. Um, what is it? Silicone is forty dollars more expensive now. Mm -hmm. It's like forty dollars more expensive. I remember the last hike was like a couple bucks. Now it's like forty. Uh anyway, all right. So I won't go into that tangent. Um, recommendations. Are... Recommendations. Who's in Canada that I know? Um, you know, there's a guy. Well, see, I, 
I guess, I don't know if he sells blanks, man. And he does a lot of resin. He's looking for latex. Uh, I don't know if specifically latex. He's just looking for blanks. Specifically matte blanks. Um, yeah. Uh, I'm trying to think. What's the dude's name? I'm trying to look it up here real quick. Uh, do, 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 do. What's... Uh, I'm drawing a blank. Um, there's a guy, uh, you might know who I'm talking about if I just mention it this way. I can't remember the name offhand. Actually, you know what? Hold on. Let me try something else because I think I can find him here real quick. Um, there's a guy that does a bunch of Jasons, like, like Freddie, Jason and all that stuff in Canada. Um, and he's done a bunch of masks. He mostly does resin, but he, he has done some masks. Um, and I, I think he might sell blanks, but I don't know for sure. Like, that's a some, tough one. I'm seeing some folks in the chat chime in right now. They're mentioning, uh, Jason Hammond is in Canada. I don't... Okay, yeah, maybe there, um, the guy I'm thinking of is Scareware, Scareware, that's Scareware Jason, Productions. That, yep. Is that him? Yeah, Jason. Yeah, Scareware Productions. That's who I was thinking of. I mean, really, I, but you'd have to hit him up if he's doing blanks. I've got a couple of blanks from him, but I, so I guess he would. But they're resin. Um, you'd have to hit him up, man, and see. Jeez, because I don't know. I mean, he's he doesn't sculpt his own. That that would be sculpt your own stuff. I mean, but if you're looking for someone that has stuff, I mean, hit up hit up Jason, man, at Scareware. I mean. I don't I just don't have any real good connections up up that way. I'm sorry. I wish I had I knew more. I could tell you more. But you know, hit him up, start there, and if not him, maybe he knows someone else or it can lead you know, that can lead to the to the to the right connection. Yeah. Sorry about that. The import taxes do suck. We feel your pain yeah. on that one. Screw the import taxes. Yeah. Uh, next question comes from uh, Mad Mate. Mad Makes, thanks for the question. Uh, Mad Makes uh, is asking, what if any, or what if any recommendations would you have on masking tape? Like any particular brand that you that you find yourself sticking to? Yeah, let me grab it. I'll grab it. Uh, I don't know the name offhand. Let me see. Here, I'll just... And yeah, just a follow up. Magneto just chimed in. Uh, he says, or they say. Uh, I do sculpt, but getting wed where I am is ninety-five dollars to ship. For one box. For one box. Oh exactly. God, that is so ridiculous. Yeah. It's because it's fifty pounds a box. Yeah. Uh, pff, duh, I should have known this. Three M precision masking tape. This stuff right here. Three M precision masking tape. The Home Depot classics. No, this is, uh, I, I don't think this is from Home Depot. I mean, I could be wrong. Maybe they do sell this, but uh, maybe they do. I don't know. But I would look it up. But this masking tape is great right here. Um, uh, it, it, it doesn't, because uh, the problem with masking tapes a lot of times is, even though they're not supposed to stick and pull paint up, they do. But this one's great. Now, I will tell you another secret to masking that a lot of guys use, and it works really good. Silly putty. It's cheap. And now it's not for straight lines. If you need a straight line, silly putty's not the way to go. But if you have a weird section you need to mask off, like on my this necro mutant here, if I needed to mask all this skin off from this, I mean silly putty would be the way to go because you can like kind of push it with a sculpting tool and get it all down in and in there. And it won't stick to the pain or lift the pain or any of that. And then I could spray around and then the rest of this head i could just cover with paper towel and masking tape but then get the the silly putty down in the hard to get areas so silly putty is the one of the greatest ways to mask difficult areas off okay right, our next question uh comes from t-tan t-tan actually uh dipped out a little bit earlier today but if you're rewatching this t-tan here's the answer to your question uh so have you added or tried adding baking soda to rust paint rust No, I haven't, but I I'm familiar with the technique. Um, I've never tried it. There's there are even you know if you want real actual rust 
texture and and stuff you can there are paints on the market and 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 little systems you can buy even at like craft stores that you can naturally rust and oxidize the paint and all that kind of stuff and and those work great those give you a real deal natural look um on things like this small i mean just paint is quick and easy you can get the look you want and you can do all these things but when if it was something maybe life size or something that i needed that kind of um uh, textural effect or whatever i would definitely probably consider using that all right the next question comes from real live artist thanks for the question uh and this is in reference to what you're working on today um they're wondering uh what is this cast in and what did you do to prep it i think they tuned in a little after the show started today. okay so this is just a hollow cast resin bust this is just a urethane resin, and it's actually smooth on 320 uh, resin, 320, uh, smooth cast 320, I believe. Yeah, and um, and then to prep it, um, you know, you could primer it uh, or whatever. I don't think I even did that. I think honestly, I just uh, this all this metal here, uh, I just painted black with black paint, you know, acrylic. Um, the only thing you would need to do to prep is if you use a release agent when you casted it, you would have to clean the release agent off the, the resin casting with some soap and water or wipe it down with alcohol, something to get that residue off before you add your paint. Otherwise, there's not much you can do. You need to do. Um, if you uh, want a primer, though, like do a nice uh, like white or gray primer, that will give your paint something more to bite onto, and that's typically what i'll do but a lot of times i don't even do that a lot of times i just paint and then seal it and it paint stays on pretty well all right our next question comes from rusty nail hey rusty thanks for the question man uh they ask have you tried the salt technique for chipping a paint? no but that's another one of those good techniques and it's cool that everyone's bringing these up because they work great you know that's the where you can lay down. Was it you? I think you lay salt down or whatever on it, and then you can like wipe it away after. You can you can paint and then wipe it away. I think that's how that works. I haven't tried that technique, but I've I've I know I'm familiar with yeah, it. Gives it like this like crusted. Look yeah, or like that. yeah, yeah. It's a good. See, I mean, like all these techniques would be great to do on stuff like this. You know, because you can get a natural uh, look to it. I forget what your the steps are to that though. I'm trying to remember with the salt, but I I'm, I'm familiar with it. I just never, but I know I don't use it. It's kind of like um when guys ask me, you know, when I paint eyes, do I put the red uh, uh thread for the for the veins? No, I just paint them in. I don't know why. I just prefer to hand paint everything um for some reason. But I, it's funny. I don't think of those techniques often but i should because i should try them out because that's just another you i you know maybe i could get you know get a whole new cool layer uh, effect to that it would be cool um and if if he's uh if he's still listening maybe he could give us a rundown of the steps because i forget what you do because there's got to be a way to like how do you get the salt to stay put i forgot how you do that i wonder if you lay it down wet it very slightly maybe dry yeah, something like that, right? You lay it down in the paint. Paint and then lay I don't know. <laughs> I'm 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 trying to remember. I I but I've seen the trick done. I mean, this is ages ago. I so I don't recall the steps, but that's a good one, man. That's a good one. And there's others too like that. I forget. There's some few there's a few others. The baking soda one and a few other ones. Yeah, all these tricks are good. And, um, you know, I mean, on YouTube, there's probably guys showing these tricks, too. So it's good to look it up and see. There's a couple more questions right now. But to kind of follow up on other projects that people are working on, um, Mad Makes mentioned much, much earlier in, uh, in uh, the stream today that they're actually in the middle of painting a cyborg bunny warrior right now. Nice, nice. Very cool. Neil Leffler is doing some final cleanup passes on two Anthony Watkin resin busts that he bought just a couple weeks ago. Oh, yeah, those are great, man. Uh, Anthony, I have a number of his orcs. Um, his uh, new one he's putting out soon, which is like a toad 
uh warrior thing that thing is so cool looking i want to get one and then there's uh like a shaman he had a new shaman uh orc which was really cool yeah his stuff is great man it's really textural and has like a lived in feel and and um he's got a he's always got a table at monster palooza um and he's one of the two he's one of those guys too i got i'll share his his pieces on here and then um there's a few others eric sosa and uh gosh i'm trying to think of all the like resin sculptor guys um there's a bunch william paquette and uh there's a whole bunch coming but yeah no his stuff is great um I, he's a friend of mine i just saw him i just talked to him on a whole bunch at monster palooza he had a great table as always super cool pieces yeah thanks for uh that's great we can see what people are working on and all that too um but we're running out of time people so let's uh i say we jump back to some painting and let me do a little more for you on this armor weathering oh here there was actually one question oh sure yeah, very 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 recently um it's from uh jason giaconetti they were just wondering if there was any updates on the three-headed monster bus you had was it speak no evil see no evil be on the no evil? oh no there's no update on that but i'll show you guys Still working. I'm still working on that, but these we can zoom in are get just about ready soon to get molded tomorrow. I gotta hurry up because these are for my upcoming class this weekend. I have a class this weekend, uh, werewolf versus vampire. So I'm just been cleaning up the sculptures on these. This is the werewolf piece. I've got his teeth over there. They're separate. I know it looks weird without teeth. But once you get the teeth in, it's... Once you get the teeth in there, it's nice. Can they see that? Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> so this is the werewolf uh, bust that comes with the class. Each student's going to get a copy of this and a copy of this, uh, which I'm finishing this one later tonight. Uh, I still got the ears and some texturing and things to do, but this is the vampire. And again, he has separate fangs and teeth. Um, so, and I might do like a little bit of hair here, like a little mohawk or something. But yeah, so this is the vampire. This is the werewolf. So that's the update there. Now, after the I do this class, these pieces um, will be available as just resin pieces that you can buy from me as well. So these are coming soon. That's the next thing to to. To kick off um all right so that's about it on there let's uh i say we jump back to this guy before we run totally out of time because i know we're, we're winding down and um let's play around with some more techniques here oh you know what this is what i was going to do now i'm going to take this uh silver the a, a different uh silver here which is called uh iron breaker i guess grab a brush which one oh i got i got two of these damn colors all right i got two two of them sometimes you have to mix these up they get they they separate and so you have to mix them up really well So I'm going to mix this up. Um, oh, and that three-headed bus that he was asking about, um, I am still working on it. Um, it's going to be a little bit because there's a lot to do on it, uh, a base and all these other things that it needs. But it will be uh, available as a kit, you know, uh, that you can buy and paint yourself. So what I'm going to do here right now is take this, it's like a little bit lighter metal. It's a little different metal than underneath. So if you remember last week when we did the, we did like a lighter, um, like a lighter kind of pale green around some of the chipping 
to what you're doing is you're going back and kind of adjusting you know the the shape of the the chipping that happened and you can kind of play around with it a little bit and it also kind of highlights it a little bit more it gives it like um more dimension because when you're putting that lighter color right next to the darker then it sinks and makes that darker color look like it's you know underneath like like the layer underneath that's the uh, chipped so the chip has happened the paint chipped and then it's or the metals corroding or whatever here so then <clears throat> you're seeing the underneath corrosion So, yeah, it gives it, like, a little highlight, you know. This is good too, like if you did something with the the dark brown that you didn't like, you know, you can correct it now. You can go back and go, oh, you know, I didn't like how big that spot was or I don't like the way that looks, you know. And you can, you know, if you wanted to completely knock something away that you did, you could do that and then uh, just re uh, go back to your steps and and redo um, your steps to bring it back up to the weathering that you that you have everywhere else. But I'm just for this, I'm just trying to add like a highlight, make the chipped area look uh, deeper. Jason just got back to us about uh, salt. Oh, cool. Yeah, I'm curious to hear that. So, I'll try to be, uh, I'll try to explain this as best as I can. So, right. Jason says, there are a couple of steps to the salt method. You start with the color you want the rust to be. So, he was mentioning earlier he uses like either paprika, cinnamon, nutmeg, or, or I think that's just paint. Well, yeah, so you just color the rust you want to Yeah, you lay down like uh like a rusty tone first. Once it's dry, then you spritz it with a piece of water, add some kosher salt where you want the rust to appear, and then once that's dry, you spray with metallic paint. Let mm. that dry, then use a chip brush to dust off the salt. Oh, okay, okay. That makes sense. And then you can add other weathering effects on top of that as well. That's awesome. Yeah, see that's awesome. Thank you, Jason, for that. Yeah, Ab absolutely. That's super cool, man. I'll have to try it, man. <clears throat> I've I've totally heard of the technique. I, I just I did not recall the steps though. And um, but yeah, that sounds like a cool one. That would give you a real natural, um, weathered finish. Obviously, with, with this guy here, I'm shooting for a very corroded metal type of finish. So, um, anyway, that's the goal here. This stuff is all just fun, you know. For me, like when I when I'm doing this kind of stuff, it's 
just this kind of mindless thing where you can just play around and you don't have to take it too seriously and just um have fun it's just the weather you know weathering it's it's a fun fun thing to do Of course, I have a lot of areas where it's sort of chipped here, so it's going to take me forever. I went so I did so much of this dark color. <laughs> also, this is cool because it's just all brush technique stuff. So you guys don't have to use an airbrush for this. Thanks, man. So as I go around here, um, you know, I probably won't have time to do every one of these because I want to show you guys a couple more last minute things. So I'll just get a few more of these edges done and then we'll move on. I can get a couple more little tricks in there for you. Because once you've seen what I'm doing here, you've seen enough of it, you get the idea. Also, I want to remind you guys that want to take painting classes in person with me that live in California. I have a painting class coming up. There's only maybe one seat left, maybe one or two, as I recall. Uh, yeah, so uh, the class is almost sold out, and it's those busts I just showed, the werewolf and vampire. You get one of those, and then you get, well, you get both of those, and then you get a 20-color paint set included with the class, eight hours of instruction, painting both of those busts, a lot of fun. Um, I get asked a lot if, if the classes are beginner or advanced. It's, it's all levels. I, I welcome all levels to my classes. Beginners do really well, actually. They've, I've seen beginners do uh, really amazing work. Uh, um, just even, even in one class. So, um, yeah, you don't have to be uh, an advanced painter. Uh, I get all kinds of people taking the classes, effects artists, friends, uh, uh, entrepreneur artists, you, actors. I mean, all kinds of people. So uh, tattoo artists take it sometimes. I get some of those guys. So it's for everybody, you know, anyone that wants to – to have fun painting some monsters that if, if that's the class you're looking for if you're looking to get in the effects industry and you want to get your chops up it's good for that it's good for just for fun or hobbyists that do model kits whatever it's for everybody i've had all hundreds and hundreds of students over the years you know i've been doing these classes for many many years so um if it's some that's something you want to get into it's it's good for you but um Obviously, you just need to be local, be able to get to where I live. So, um, all right, I'm going to stop playing around and noodling with this because I could go on forever with this technique. But you get the idea. And really, when the light catches it at the right angle, you see the, the highlighted area there. Um, and so what, the other thing to do sometimes with, this, uh, with these rusty stains is not just do them in rust, but... We can take some of these dark colors, really these brown, there's, there's a brown, a lighter brown in here. Let me get that one going. And we can take some of this, um, I don't know if you guys remember, I keep talking about this, this uh, technical wash, uh, sorry, not a wash, it's a uh, Lemian medium. Um, so I'm going to use like a, an extra brush to do this. I'm going to take some of this brown here and actually I might go ahead and mix 
a little bit of this into it to thin it. Maybe a touch of water. I want to make it a little runnier. But one of the things you can do uh, is kind of come into some of these um, stains uh, of rust running down. You know, they don't have to just be um, orange rust color. You can introduce, this is something I didn't show you guys last week, but you can introduce some extra color in there. And one thing about this medium is you can blend out things with it. That's why I'm I'm having a clean brush with the with with uh, some of that medium, and then I can kind of do this and barely barely touch it and let it wash down. See like that, and I can just kind of let it rust down and. Get all creepy cool like this. Oh, don't do that. See that mistake I just made? I just touched the <laughs> touched the chin. So you can see how this having this little bit of medium on there, it thins it out and then I can play with it and get really cool rusty dripping. Like make the drips look more interesting. Rather than just be rust. Uh there there's a brown rust color now introduced to help sell it first step you just got right now there mentioning that they've actually taken one of your in person classes. Oh yes he has, yeah. And uh he said it was great other than people getting mad at the airbrush fumes. Oh yeah, well <laughs> there's gonna be airbrush fumes for sure, yeah. I mean, yeah, there's not much we can do about that. Did they get mad? I don't remember anyone getting really mad about it, but maybe they did, and I didn't know that I complained. Um, Kirk and John Eubanks. John Eubanks said that they've taken a ton, or yes. a ton from the classes that they've taken from him. Yeah, yeah, John, John's taken a number of them, and, and Kirk as well, and yeah, for sure, man, for sure. Um. Yeah, I've taught a whole bunch of them over the years. This this bus was was one of the classes too. So, you know. So you can see how corrosive this starts to add the the corrosive vibe this adds to it, you know. So one thing is like we study rust and and some of those uh like on uh aircraft carriers or tanks or whatever the hell you know you're referencing um you'll you'll see that rust isn't just orange only you know like a there's there's layers and depth to it and and different things that you got to look at um oh another thing too is i mean here I'll, I'll do this here i'll finish up like one more area here with this and i'll show you another one like like you can do uh, more than just this color too um but that's looking pretty cool and creepy um but yeah we could take for example <clears throat> you could even take this the patina the original patina color that we had and and do streaks of that too like this and then wash this down the side like that you know and all this brush here all it has on it it's a clean brush and all it has is just dipped it in this medium stuff i showed you the the Lim Lamian or Lim Limian medium, whatever that stuff is called, Gorilla Snot. I don't know what what it actually is, but um, yeah, you can see. And what's great is this 
on the on the surface you're basically making diluting a wash of color to get like an effect thanks and i'm just following some of the edging of the rust that i'm seeing like the, sh the shapes I've laid down here. And you see how that looks? See if you can get a good shot of, of that there for them. Got some more context on the thing Kirk was talking about with the airbrush. I guess uh, they were, that was, that class was at Beer Fest Naples? Oh, yeah, yeah. And that they one. They were in the middle of the dealer's room. Oh, that yeah, that one. Gosh, that was ages ago, man. That was the show that uh, Kirk Hammett from Metallica, it was his monster show. Huh. Um, yeah, that was a lot of fun. And we, yeah, we painted these mummy busts there. Um, Life-size mummy uh, sculpture, that beautiful uh, sculpt that... Uh, was the kind of subject for the class. But yeah, so this is cool because you can see how I can take also the patina color we laid down earlier and introduce it as like a like a stain running down next to all this rust. Gives you all this dimension. And you know, you don't have to be like the best painter in the world or anything to do this. You can just model this on like this and play around with it. Now, the only thing is, I wouldn't get carried away and do it in too many places everywhere. Um, if you want to settle it into cracks, you can do that kind of thing where I just pushed it in there and then wet it out like that and it'll settle into the crack which looks cool and these little details you know and set it into this rusty crack here things like that so there's a lot a lot of different things you can do with uh, these with these layers. And then, you know, if you want to go back to your oranges or whatever and lay in some of those rusty, very rusty orange colors like this next to this stuff, you can. You know, you can do that as well. So there's a whole bunch of little weathering tips and tricks that, you know, you can do. And I could go on and on with this forever and just weather the hell out of this, which is what I'll do. I'll weather this really crazy and then um and um and don't forget, you know, you can still come back with your metallic pen and out, you know, highlight edges, you know, and pop edges of of uh you know stuff that you want like that metallic <clears throat> sheen to pop through here, you know. Like if you still want that get some of that metallic uh, weathering, you know, where the metal's coming through. I'll do some of that here, here, you know, for you, just real quick. So there's, you know, all the tricks of the trade. You can keep, <coughs> excuse me, you can keep adding and adding and adding until you are happy with 
with what you've got. But I think that's going to end the episode for tonight. Um, thank you so much again for hanging out with us on Monday Night Monster Jam, making this a fun show. We appreciate all you guys so much. And, um, yeah, I think that'll be all the weathering we do for tonight on this armor. Again, these are just a bunch of techniques. I would suggest that when you do this, take your time and really plan out and map it out. Uh, go with one layer slowly at a time. I'm just jamming for you guys here to show you this quickly, but you get the idea, I'm um, sure. And again, remember, you can start with any metallic base color you want. You could do a blue, you could do whatever, red, you can do however you wanted your armor to be, and then do these techniques on top of those, those colors. Red might be a little tricky to do, but there's, there's ways to do it um, and weather it properly. Um, but yes, so that is uh, some weather effects and how to paint them by hand uh, for you guys tonight. Hopefully you guys learned a lot. I had a lot of fun doing this for you. Um, we'll be back next Monday with another Monday Night Monster Jam episode 14. Don't miss it. And I don't know what we're doing. I'll let you know when we get there because <laughs> I'm winging each one of them. Uh, so a couple things before we go. We are quickly coming up on that giveaway. We're at 937, probably more than that now, subscribers. Thank you to all you guys who have helped get us new subscribers. If you're reaching out to people you know, helping spread the word, sharing these videos or sharing links to these videos on your uh, social media platforms. We super, super appreciate you for that. And thank you so much. Um, and as such, we have the first giveaway coming up, which is going to be 10 lucky winners to get the busts. We've been talking about these guys here for a while. So we're going to be giving away these monster busts, all painted 10 sets. And, um, let's see what else. Uh, I've got my class coming up, so if you want to get in on that, you got to hurry. There's only like one or two spots left, June 25th. That's next Saturday. There's still time. You can get in. Uh, you can sign up on my website, caseylovemonsters.com. Go to the in-person page, in-person class page, excuse me. Scroll down. You can sign up and join that class. Uh, I believe there's one, maybe two spots. Hit me up if you're in truly interested. And uh, get yourself two awesome monster busts. 20 colors of paint and some in-person teaching right here in the studio. So that's awesome. Uh, what else we got coming up? Oh, please remember like, and subscribe all the videos. If you can, that is what helps us grow. It helps us, it helps the whole thing with YouTube and all that. It keeps us going. That is super important. Um, so please like, and subscribe if you can. Um, also we have our Facebook group, Monday Night Monster Jam on Facebook. So if you're not getting enough Monday Night Monster Jam from us here, you can go to our Facebook page, join the group, and check out all the awesome work that everybody is doing there. There's an amazing group of people there. Share your work too. Yes. If you're working on any. Absolutely. Show us your studios too. That'd be interesting. Oh yeah, let's do that. Let's do a studio share. I'll share some of my studio. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'll share my studio. My voice is going. I'll share uh, that. It'd be great to see everyone else's studio. We can all talk about studio ideas, things like that. I try to get on there as much as I can. It's been a busy few weeks for me, so I haven't been on as much as possible, but I'll try to get on there more. Um, the Facebook group is great. There's like almost 700 people now or something like that. It's growing all the time. I just, uh, what, we had like 13 people I didn't see over the weekend, and I, I somehow missed and got, you know, uh, let them in. Let them in. The, yeah. Join, join, join. So uh, I'm always checking as much as I can. And uh, there's that. So if you want more Monday Night Monster Jam from us, you can check it out on Facebook, our Facebook group. And uh, that's a great community of people there. Some tremendous artists showing their work and sharing. The other thing is uh, you can check out more of my work if you want to see what I do. Uh, you can check it out on Instagram, Casey Love Designs. Um, I also have a paint page specifically for paint statue work where it's Casey Love Paint Works. That's, those two are on Instagram. And um, my Facebook page is Casey Love. YouTube channel is obviously Casey Love Monsters. So 
that's it from us tonight. Thank you again, guys. Thank you, thank you for the questions. Um, and if you missed any of this, you can rewatch this or any of the other episodes anytime you like on YouTube. So we will see you soon. Next Monday, we'll be here before you know it. So we'll see you then. Thank you again, guys. Good night. Good night, everybody.